My husband said we were going to Albany, and I thought he meant Albany, New York. And I was shocked beyond what you can imagine that it was Albany, Georgia. So when we first got here, I said we better find a barber shop, a beauty shop, church, and see what's going on in the arts in this town. And so we did. And we took a drive one Sunday afternoon with our two little boys, and we drove down Slappy and saw this little cute building. And we said, hmm, that looks like an art gallery. Let's go inside. And lo and behold, the sign said, Banks Haley Art Gallery. And we parked our car to go inside. And they, by the way, were having an opening of a show that afternoon. And we opened the door, and everybody was chatting and having cocktails and laughing. And all of a sudden, stone silence. And I said, what are we going to do? And he says, we're going inside. That was our first introduction to Albany, Georgia and its art. Well, we went on inside and everybody gained their composure when they saw we were going to eat them alive and kept on talking and drinking. And then finally a lady started following us around the room and she spoke to my husband and said, you look like you know what you're looking at. And he says, well, a little bit. And so she didn't say anything else, but she still walked along. And then she said, well, who are you? We told my names, we kept on going. Before the evening was over, they knew who we were. And after everybody got comfortable knowing the two of us, we got involved with that art here in this town. And the rest is history. I'm almost 90 years old, and I still feel that the art department here in the art gallery is very, very close to me. It's almost like my baby. To become our first AMA treasure, it was obvious. When we came up with the idea with the Friends of the AMA group, everyone said almost unanimously, in unison, Sylvia Berry. Um, Sylvia has given so much to this city, to the arts. She and Arthur, her dear Arthur, who she called Barry her entire life, they did things their own way and they moved to Albany in the late 60s when it was a challenge. It was a challenge for her and her family and her, her two wonderful boys who are now marvelous grown men, uh, Kevin and Keith. Sylvia is, um, she's an original and uh, I, I save her every moment I get to spend with her. As my husband was doing the art, I was teaching music. I taught music in the public schools here in town and enjoyed that. On one day, on the way to the laundry to get our clothes done, I passed by a music store and they had these gorgeous pianos in there. And me and my oldest son, who was Kevin, went in there and bought a piano. And my husband almost had a heart attack when I called and said, I need papers for you to sign. He said, papers to sign? How in the world are we gonna pay for a piano, Sylvia? I said, don't worry, I'll get piano students. So we'll, I'll pay for it, don't worry. And sure enough, I still have that piano today and I love it. And then upstairs where he used to paint, the piano was upstairs and I played piano. There was nothing for us to go to bed at two, three o'clock in the morning. We never went to bed before then. Cause that's when he would paint and that's when I'd play piano. And we'd have drinks then. And then we'd go to bed. We had fun all the time. In fact, one of the reasons that I'm still alive now and so happy at this age is because of the music along with the art. It's kept me going. It's too bad other people don't feel that way. Because I'm sure if I didn't have the love and the involvement of the arts, that I would not be talking to you now at almost 90 years old. I love what I do, and I don't make any apologies for anybody I've loved. And any way we've lived in Albany, Georgia, it's one of the best places I've ever been in my life. Some of my best friends were people I met through that museum because they understood our vision, our world, that a lot of people didn't have the background to understand. I don't know if the world could handle more Sylvia Berries. She is an exceptional person. She's so much fun and so deep and profound. I know that before I go to see her on any given day, 
I need to prepare myself mentally and spiritually because I know I'm in for a ride. Um, Sylvia is, she's almost ineffable. It's almost like trying to describe um, a Botticelli or a Kahinda Wiley, just a perfect piece of art. We found out after a while, people will respect you no matter what you look like if you have something to offer. I didn't really want to be a board member. That was never in my mind. I was shocked when they asked me to be on the board. I wanted to be involved in the arts because, well, you know, I came from a family. My, my mother was a jazz pianist. Had she not been a black woman in the South during that time, she'd probably been professional. She was that good. To me, music and art was a way of expression. I don't know, it just made you feel a certain way. I can't imagine life without having music and art. Sylvia Berry is one of the truest human beings that I have ever met. She is one of my best friends, and she was one of my first friends after moving to Albany, Georgia, a year and a half ago. I can understand why she was, and still is, a trustee emeritus for the Albany Museum of Art. She is a um, spectacular advocate for, I would say first and foremost, basic human rights and the very human right of art in our lives. I'm now in a, in a state of um, what most people would feel is devastating, being very seriously ill with cancer. And I'm having a good time with that too. You can't live forever. You just have to live, and I've done that. I'm doing that now and having the time of my life. And I hope other people will learn that too. You'd be much better off if you do. I want to be more like Sylvia. And I try to be every day. To be that good and that understanding and that creative and to love life as much as she does, wow. She's just off the charts magnificent.